Hi there and welcome back. Today I am greeting you from a beautiful but freezing cold Basel, Switzerland, as you can see by the flag in the background. Uh, me and Pino are just on our last walk with this kind of weather, hopefully. Um, I've already packed all my stuff into our car and we're heading to Mallorca again. So I'm gonna take you with me on our road trip and I honestly can't wait to get rid of this jacket and scarf and everything and to get back to sunny Spain. Hi, I'm Scarlett and I'm starting a permaculture project here on the east coast of Mallorca. Follow along as I document the whole process of transforming this derelict piece of land into a food forest. For the last two years I've been driving back and forth between Switzerland and Mallorca quite a lot because I am still running a business in my home country. I choose driving over flying because of my dog and also I really enjoy <laughs> slow traveling. However, we were facing quite unpleasant temperatures. This time I was accompanied by Susan, a friend and gardener you might already know if you have been watching all of our videos. It's minus three degrees somewhere in France, in the middle of nowhere. We uh, spent our night here on this parking space. And yeah, it was freezing cold, but we survived. Now we're gonna take a walk with Pino and then move on to Spain. Pino is not cold. For my road trips, I installed a foldable bed into my kangoo to convert it into a mini camper. And with any temperatures above the freezing point, it is actually quite comfortable. After a long, long drive, we arrived in Barcelona, where we embarked a ferry. I booked a pet-friendly cabin for us, and the next morning, we already arrived in Mallorca. Good morning! We made it back to the island and I'm really happy we did. It was a quite a long trip, but if all goes well, this was the second last time that I have to take this trip uh, for a while because I intend to move here forever in spring. So wish me luck. Unfortunately, I also have some bad news for you today. Uh, while I was in Switzerland, one of the cats disappeared. My friends who looked after them did everything they could to find it, but they didn't have any luck. It's already been more than two weeks and she unfortunately hasn't returned. I feel quite sad because I invested so much in keeping her alive all that time and I raised her and I still hope that she's alive, but um, I know that that possibility is getting smaller and smaller with every day she doesn't return so today we're gonna go on a tour Pino and I I started to train him to search for things um, 
to prepare him for his new job. I already contacted all the neighbors and none of them have seen them. In fact, one of the neighbors also lost two of his cats around the same time, which makes me think that this could be a very bad sign because there are hunters in this area and although I put up all the signs that hunting isn't allowed on my property you never know and that would be really really sad So it's my first day back on the land in 2024. I just checked on all the no hunting signs I put up last year and made them even more visible just to protect the two remaining cats I have. Also I put on, I put on a new collar so it should be very clear that they're house cats but as it is a nice and sunny afternoon, we decided to spend it in the garden. Uh, we're gonna put up a flower circle right here in the back. We're gonna start adding some flowers and grasses. But first we need to take out all the bushy leaves, um, mostly the olives and everything that's gonna go grow into big trees and would destroy our new flower meadow. So that's the biggest task and then we're gonna sow some nice organic wildflower mix for the Mediterranean climate. So I'm super excited about that because it's gonna change the landscape a lot. We don't have any grasses here which is a pity because I think it's something that makes a place look very beautiful. Yeah, let's see how it goes. For our flower circle, we chose a spot close to where I want to put the beehives later. The idea is to start with a small patch and let itself seed from there. Mostly to save on water, but also on energy and seeds. Then we will add more and more of these flower circles over the coming years. Good morning! I just woke up. I spent the night out here with the cats and Pino, of course. They're chasing each other. And since I've been away for a while, I thought I'll make a quick tour and take you with me. But first things first, the bin of my composting toilet is full for the first time. So I'm gonna take it out and put in a new one and see how long that will last. So I filled up the bottom of the new bucket with a bunch of sticks and a little bit of charcoal to make like a drainage and to soak up all the bad odors that are gonna start coming in soon.
So that's all done and the sun's already coming out. It's always a big problem when I'm out here. I haven't even had coffee yet, but I'm already working on stuff. As you can tell, I still have some work to do on my sink situation, but at least it's closer to the toilet now. And I'm still looking for a proper sink that I can fix to the toilet building. And also um, two walls are missing at the toilet, so. Okay, so let's make a tour and check out what the plants are doing. We had a particularly dry winter and it was a big struggle for our, all the farmers, especially with animals because the sheep didn't have anything to eat. But it had rained uh, just a week before I arrived for more or less the first time ever this winter. And so the soil is really nice and moist. And finally the clover came up, or how do you call that in English, the oxalis, which um, makes everything look nice and green. So I'm really happy about that. All the trees I planted are doing very well, except for the two avocados. They struggled a bit with the cold it seems their leaves are not looking too good at the moment but they already have fresh bulbs so i think they're gonna survive all the other tropical trees were covered and as you can see we have some borage blooming here and some favas coming up and some cats as well Last week, Susan and I already cleaned out all of the herbs. They were covered in oxalis and they look much better now. Since it hasn't been raining at all, most of our beans and peas that we put in before I left didn't come up, except for those who were very close to the irrigation system. <laughs> One of my favorite trees at the moment is the guava tree, which I was really surprised how well it is doing. It is carrying so many fruit. Our bananas uh, just survived. They don't look very, very healthy at the moment, but I think they managed to get through the winter with the felt we put on them. And this is the newest addition to our land, which is the new flower circle and I covered it up a bit to protect it from the birds. I'm really curious how that's gonna work out but I'm hoping that we have some lovely flower meadow here soon to also attract some more pollinators because we don't have many out here. Since it hasn't been raining the irrigation system was on all the time during November and December uh, I just let it run once a week but yeah it's just crazy if you think about it because that should be our rainy season out here. I hope there is some more rain coming because I am planning to put in some more trees and plants of course. In order to grow food, our trees and veggies need to be pollinated. This is the main reason why we are constantly adding more flowers to our food forest. 
the dead almond trees provide great habitat for wild bees. But since this project is all about self-sufficiency, I also wanted to welcome some honeybees. Today I'm on the property a bit earlier than usual because I'm expecting a very exciting delivery. I ordered a beehive including the population so I'm super excited for them to arrive and to be installed and also I am very excited to learn all about beekeeping because this is all very new to me. Introducing a beehive to your orchard can significantly increase fruit yield. However, it is essential to ensure that your orchard provides a suitable environment for bees, including diverse plant species for forage in all seasons. Melvici provides a great service for everybody who wants to keep bees in Mallorca but doesn't yet have the knowledge. They not only deliver the bees and the hive, but also visit their clients five times a year to check on the bees' health. And on request, they also replace the honeycombs and help you to harvest your honey too. I'm happy to accept their help to get started and to learn from their skills. You find the link to Melvici in the description below. And don't forget to say hi from us. In the next video we will finally start our veggie garden using the no dig method. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching.